Once upon a time, in King Vidyadhar's royal court, an artist came to showcase his art. Is there anyone here who can accept my challenge and take out this lion from the cage without opening it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're challenging the intelligence of people of Vijayanagar? And that in front of our king? <laughs> king Vidyadhar was proud of his people and his own intelligence. He quickly identified the reality of the lion, which was made of facts. Fine. Your wax lion is already out of the cage. <laughs> this is Vijayanagar. Remember, you can't just trick my people and get away with it. Now my people will decide your fate. So, artist, hope you got your answer. He doesn't deserve an answer, but punishment. Yes, he deserves a punishment. <laughs> 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 he got what he deserved. Yes, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> Who put you in this state, my child? It's done by King Vidyadhar Guruji. Uh -huh. He is too proud of his people and his intelligence. Otherwise, no king would insult an artist like he did, Guruji. Raja Vidyadhar is my student. But it seems to me that he needs to be taught again. Umesh, Harish, Manish. Guruji called his three favorite disciples to break the king's ego. As you wish, Guruji. We'll do as you instructed. All three of them disguised themselves and set out to follow their guru's orders. And Harish, he reached a pawn shop. Sir, how much do these beetle leaves cost? 200 leaves for 10 coins. They all are fresh. How many do you want? Keep these 10 coins and just give me 25 leaves for now. Give the rest of the 175 leaves to my colleague when he comes with a letter. Mm -hmm. Here. Ah. <laughs> We have beautiful shawls for you. Tell me, sir, which one would you like to buy? I would like to buy that shawl. You have selected one of the best shawls in the shop, sir. You have a keen eye. It's just for 200. Hmm. Keep these 25 coins. You can take the rest of the 175 from the beetle shop owner. You can send anyone to collect it from him. Just give him my letter and he will give it to you. Hmm. The boy went to pawn shop owner. He looked at the letter and said, Yes, yes, that man came here a few minutes ago. Let me finish my lunch, then you come and collect them. I will count and keep 175 of them, okay? The boy came back and informed the owner. Thinking that he would definitely receive the money, the owner gave the shawl to Harish. But when the boy and the owner reached the pawn shop to collect the money, he handed over the beetle leaves to them instead of the coins. Huh? <laughs> what should I do with this? I don't care. Eat or sell them. It's up to you. What? But I have come here to collect my coins. Which coins you are talking about? That man asked me to give him remaining beetle leaves and which I did. Now, both the shop owners began to fight over the beetle leaves and the coins. <laughs> the matter reached the royal court of the king. After listening to their story, the king realized immediately that someone had not just fooled them, but also raised a question about his people and his own intelligence. He quickly passed an order. Whoever has tricked our innocent merchants should be immediately arrested and put in jail. That's my order. King's soldiers started searching for Harish. Huh? Let's search over there. Now it was Guruji's next disciple, Manish's turn. The shop that Manish went to was not just any such shop. It was the shop of the king's artisan. 
where there were wooden iron items made by him. Are you the royal artisan? Hmm? The artisan thought Manish was a wealthy man. So he quickly rushed to him. Come in, sir. I have created a wonderful device just for people like you. If you catch a thief, you can make him wear this pillory and take him to jail. The thief will never be able to escape. <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking with me, sir? How can this wooden device stop a thief who can break even the iron chains? Huh? I am a royal artisan, sir, and I can prove its effectiveness to you. Just lock the device, sir, and check its strength. <laughs> Manish was eagerly waiting for this moment. After the artisan requested it, he locked the device quickly and ran away while taking the key, leaving the artisan stranded. The moment King heard this news, he got angry and furious. I can't take it anymore. Someone is intentionally making fool out of my people and making fun of me. I will catch him myself. Hmm. The king set out in disguise. As he was searching around, he saw a man sitting with a basket of mangoes in a deserted place outside the city's gate. He was none other than the master's third disciple, Umesh. Why has he set up his shop at the gate of the city? Is he the one who is fooling my people? I have to check. Brother, how much for mangoes? I'm not sitting here to sell mangoes. Then, are you new over here? Are you unaware there is a group of thugs who are active in the village who are fooling innocent people over here? Even our king is troubled by them. Yes, that is true. The leader of that group is going to take this route. Huh? I will catch him and hand him over to the king. Do you know their leader? Oh, hmm? yes, of course. He's strong and uh -huh. tall. In fact, very hmm? tall. You will get scared of him after seeing him. Come on hmm? now, please leave from here. Brother, I have also come here to see him. I should hide somewhere. <laughs> oh? <laughs> if you keep doing this, I will never be able to catch him. Um, okay. Uh, okay, you do one thing. You just hide in this mango sack and be silent. Come on, go fast. The king agreed with Umesh and hid himself in the sack. And Umesh quickly tied the sack. The king waited for some time. But after it was too late, uh, he started shouting. Open this! Is anyone out there? Get me out of here! But there was no one to listen to him except the bull. <laughs> as soon as the soldiers opened the sack, they saw that the king was inside it. <laughs> Where is that leader? <laughs> the next day, Vidyadhar was shocked to see his Guruji with his disciples and the same artist in the royal court. Huh? Uh, uh. Hmm. Uh? <laughs> Guruji, he's the same person who tied you inside the sack. <laughs> yes, these are my students who fooled you and those three merchants of yours. Uh -huh. And they just did it uh -huh. because I asked them to do it. Uh -huh. And this act was necessary just to break your pride with Yadhar so that you never insult an artist again in the pride of your knowledge. I have understood it. Please forgive me, Guruji. Vidyadhar learned his lesson and bid farewell to the artist and disciples with gifts. <laughs> there was a boy named Veerwara. He used to work on a sea ship. During one of his sea voyages, a very fast storm destroyed his ship and scattered everything. The next morning, 
when Veerwara regained the consciousness, he found himself on an unknown island. Where have I come? Is anyone there? Is anyone there? Is anyone there? After walking for a long distance, Veerwara finally came across a city. I found the people! Where have all the people of this place gone? I can't see anyone. Huh? Hail, Hail the, the king! king! Hail, Hail the, king! the king! King, but where is he? Oh, oh no! Stop! What's happening here? And where are you taking me? Despite the beauty of this island, the rules here are equally peculiar. According to these rules, whoever arrives, whether by accident or by traveling, he is declared the new king. While the former king is sent to a deserted island for the rest of his life. It's strange that whoever serves as the king has to spend their life in isolation. This is very weird. By the way, who is the king here at present? Me. We huh? understood why the man was so sad. Because it was now the turn of that elderly person to leave the palace and go to the deserted island, according to the island's rules. Following the island's rules, Veerwara became King Veerwara from that moment. People loved him a lot because of his wisdom and kind nature. But there was one thing that troubled Veerwara's mind. And that was... One day, someone else would come as the king. And on that day, he too would have to go to the deserted island. To escape this fate, King Veerwara devised a plan in his mind. Huh. Soldiers! In the rainy season, the homes of the people living on the coast often get washed away. That's why I order you to develop some parts of the deserted island exactly like our beautiful city. There should be houses, shops, roads and all amenities. What the desert island? But my king, only the kings who are abandoned from here are supposed to stay there. Ah. This is not a suggestion, it's an order. As you wish, As you my, wish king. my king. Following King Veerwara's orders, some parts of dense jungle on the deserted island were cleared and developed. Now, the deserted island was no longer deserted. And then it wasn't deserted anymore. Why would King Veerwara worry about going there to stay after a new king arrived? In this way, his plan worked. And he began to rule without worry. That's when one day... My king! My king! My king! There is news of a large ship sinking far away. Forgive me, my king, but whenever such incidents occur, someone arrives here carried by the current, which means... This means your new king is about to arrive. Yes, my king. And the sad part is that the sinking ship bore the flag of our enemies, whose eyes has been on our island for a long time. And according to the rules of our island, if any of their men arrive here, we are obliged to make him the king. Upon hearing this news, the people of the island were not only worried, but also deeply saddened, as they had begun to love 
King Veerwara over time. Moreover, King Veerwara had also developed love and affection for them. So he made a plan to ensure that no outsider could come and harm them. You all will have to change your king anyway, whether you like it or not. So why not do it in such a way that you can choose whoever you want as your king? How is that possible, Your Highness? According to the rules, only a lost and wandering person can be our king. Now how can a lost and wandering person be of our choice? Right now I am the king. And the king can make the rules and change them too. Not every stranger is good. And it's not wise to hand over our kingdom to a stranger or an enemy. Yes, yes, the king is, the king is right. He's right. But what can we do in this, my king? The decision is mine, not yours. Considering the welfare of the people here, I propose this rule that you can choose a king from amongst yourselves. But selecting a king from amongst ourselves poses the risk of bias. That's why we choose an outsider as our king. I also have a solution for this. If that king doesn't live up to your expectations or shows any discrimination, then some key members of the kingdom will have the right to immediately remove the king. Wow, wow my god, what, what an idea. idea! Your suggestion is very good. We all agree with your proposal. Well, my king, if that's the case, then why don't you become our king forever? No, my friend. My time to leave this place has come. Now it's your turn to choose your king. Ultimately, the forest goddess was pleased by their prayers. <laughs> I have understood your problem, my child. In a few months from today, a beautiful princess will be born in your palace. However, there will be one flaw in her. Flaw? flaw? What kind, what kind of, flaw? of flaw? She will have a strong liking for wearing new clothes every day. And this habit of hers may bring a great crisis in your life. So tell me, do you still wish to have a child? Goddess, it doesn't matter if there is some pain along with such great happiness. As you wish. <laughs> As for the blessings of the goddess, a princess was born in the royal palace just a few days later. Huh? Huh? Congratulations! A daughter is born! <laughs> My little princess! <laughs> Listen, everyone! Huh? 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 As soon as this news spread throughout the kingdom, the entire kingdom lit up like Diwali in celebration of the king's joy. <laughs> As time passed, Princess Chitralekha became more beautiful. Be feeling tired from keeping it on your head all day. Let me wear it for a while. As you wish, Princess. It looks so beautiful. <laughs> huh? What are you doing? Colors are not meant to be kept like this, but to be spread and enjoyed. <gasps> hmm? <laughs> uh. <laughs> You're looking good. Ah. Uh. Where is my special attire for today? Here it is, princess. Huh? Huh? What is this? Will Princess Chitralekha wear such ordinary clothes? Even after my instructions, you haven't added any diamonds to it. And where is the work of golden flowers on it? Pardon me, princess, but when I went to the minister, I couldn't get the necessary things. For the time being, 
प्लीज चूज एंड वेयर वन ऑफ दीज क्लोथ वंस प्रिंसेस चित्र लेखा वेयर अ ड्रेस शी डज नॉट इवन टच इट अगेन एंड यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट री वेयरिंग दीज The princess collection of jeweled clothes kept growing and the treasury kept emptying. As Chitralekha grew up, the goddess's warning to the king seemed to be coming true. Is the treasury empty? With your presence in the palace along with so many soldiers, such a major theft occurred uh -huh. and no one knew. Uh -huh. The thief should be arrested as soon as possible. Forgive me, my king. Forgive me, but this is not any kind of thief's work. The entire treasury has been exhausted in making the princess's clothes. What did you say? Making clothes? Yes, my king. This is a time of critical crisis for our kingdom. I tried to inform you, but every time you refuse to listen. saying that whatever the princess wants huh? should be given to her hmm. so what should i do so what did he say wrong in this calm down princess don't talk like that don't forget that i have to take care of the entire people of the kingdom along with you, oh. you, you, you. the entire kingdom was immersed in worry seeing the severity of the situation the king comes up with a solution The king went to the forest with his daughter to seek help from the goddess. Uh, uh, oh goddess, please help. I have come here to seek your help. Have mercy on me, goddess. I know the reason for your visit here, my king. Remember, I had cautioned you, but you didn't pay any heed to it. Please forgive me, goddess. But now my entire kingdom is in distress. You are the only one who can help us. All right. In order to help you, all I can do is send new clothes for your princess every single day. What? Really? I'm blessed, goddess. But princess, be aware. There is also a condition. If you exchange the clothes I provide with someone else, everything will come to an end on that day. Huh? This will never happen, Goddess. As you wish. <laughs> From the very next day, new clothes used to appear for the princess every day, and she felt quite happy while wearing them. The days, months, and seasons changed, but what didn't change was the princess's restless mind. After enjoying for some days, the princess began to get bored of wearing the goddess's clothes. And with time, she even forgot her promise to the goddess. So beautiful. I know I'm beautiful. Who is this beautiful girl? Huh? Whoever she might be, but no one can be more beautiful than the princess. But who cares? Well, the princess is indeed beautiful. She has precious clothes and jewelry, but she still looks so lovely even in these ordinary clothes. Ah! Uh? I am wearing such beautiful clothes, adorned with jewelry given by the goddess. Yet how can she look so beautiful? It seems there's something special about her clothes, and I should be the one to have the most beautiful clothes on earth. Hey you, listen to me. Look, the princess is here. Huh? Greetings, princess. Look, I need to go to the fair, and if the people there recognize me, it will be a problem. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't mind, can you give me your sari in exchange for my clothes? My sari? <laughs> Are you joking with me, princess? Absolutely not. All right. Even after my warning, 
You have exchanged the clothes I gave you with someone else, and you have dared to disobey my command. For this, you will surely be punished. What mistake have I made? Please forgive me, goddess. There is no forgiveness for not obeying my command. You will have to leave this world immediately. Uh, no, no, please, please don't do this, goddess. <laughs> King Vidyadhar needed a minister for his kingdom, someone wise who could give him the right advice at the right time. Listen, listen, everyone. Pay attention to the king's command. Four months from now, those who bring fresh vegetables from their fields and a bowl of intelligence while following their shadows all the way to the palace will be chosen as the minister of the kingdom in the royal palace. Listen, everyone. <laughs> Money is honey. I will definitely become the minister. <laughs> Come on, let's begin the work to become the minister. You are right. While everyone was working in the fields to carry fresh vegetables to the royal palace, Saranga's preparation was different from them. No one could understand what was going on in his mind. Saranga, we need to take fresh vegetables to the royal palace, not just the soil. <laughs> Days and weeks passed. Finally, the morning arrived. When everyone had to go to yeah. the royal palace with their respective vegetables and fruits. I will become the minister. <laughs> Saranga's preparation was different, and so was his path. Look there, Saranga is going that way. <laughs> that path goes through the hills. Even people drain out while walking on that path. <laughs> How will the vegetable remain fresh? Oh, so everyone in Vijayanagar wants to become the minister, eh? Yeah, yeah, the, the fresh, fresh vegetables. vegetables. Eh? Look at this. And this too. The vegetables are fresh, but you had to come here while chasing your shadow. Didn't you hear the announcement? Everyone thought that by simply bringing fresh vegetables, they would become ministers. That's why no one bothered about the condition of the shadow in the announcement. Saranga was intelligent. Upon hearing the condition that one must come chasing his shadow, he understood that the king wanted them to enter through the western gate of the palace. On that path, the sun rays fall on the backside of the people, thus creating their shadows in front of them. Mungi, look there. The king has asked for fresh vegetables, but he's just carrying soil. <laughs> he can't be so foolish. I am sure he has found a way to carry fresh vegetables to the palace. You mean he will become the minister? No. By looting his vegetables, we will become ministers. And then there will be no need to steal forever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you! Whatever vegetables you are taking to the palace, Hand them over to us. Mm. Otherwise... Uh, yes, sir. I will do right away. Uh, uh, here it is. Uh, uh, you should open it only in front of the king. If opened earlier, the air might spoil the vegetables. Oh, yes. We get your point. 
Chungi and Mungi had reached the king with the box given by Saranga. Hail to the king! Greetings. Wow, you came here while following your shadow. <laughs> but where are your vegetables? My king, I don't think he has them. <laughs> Please take a look at my fresh vegetables. After becoming a minister, I will handle people like him. Who waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Let me have a look at your vegetables. <laughs> hmm? Huh? Hmm? Let us. Where are the vegetables? Except our greetings, King. We are thieves, tempted by the desire to become minister. We stole. For this, we should be punished. Arrest them and put them in jail. <laughs> As I had mentioned earlier, Saranga was intelligent, <laughs> and now it was his turn to prove it. Huh? So the villagers who thought Saranga was just carrying soil were mistaken. In reality, huh? it wasn't just soil; it contained <laughs> vegetables and carrots that he had grown <laughs> in the bullock cart over the past few weeks. He planned to ensure that the fresh vegetables reached King Vidyadhar. Well done. You must have also bought that bowl filled with intelligence. Hmm. Yes, my king. My king, there is intelligence in it, but you hmm. will have to extract it without breaking the pot. The pumpkin that Saranga had placed in the pot had grown as big as the pot itself over these days with the help of the manure and water. Without breaking the pot, it would be impossible to take it out. But he wanted to test Saranga further. Your intelligence and cleverness are admirable, Saranga. Now tell me, if we have to choose one of these three dolls for the royal court, which one would it be? I will need three wires, my king. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh. Hmm. Hey, what he's doing? This doll is the best for royal court, my king, because if a secret is spoken into the ears of the first doll without understanding its significance, it will let it out from the other ear. If the secret is spoken into the ears of the second doll, it will speak it to someone else. But whatever is spoken into the ears of the third doll will remain a secret only. <laughs> wow! Well done. <laughs> Just. One final question. <laughs> the king showed three rings to Saranga and asked, "Suppose the red ring empowers the wearer to devise plans. The green one grants the ability to implement plans in normal situations, and the blue one gives the power to execute plans in difficult circumstances." Who should wear which ring in this royal court? Mm. My king, you should wear the red ring because the plan is made by the king. The green ring should be for your minister so that he can implement plans in normal situations. And the blue ring should be worn by the commander so that he can execute your plans in any difficult circumstances. Well done. You are really intelligent, Saranga. <laughs> My king. And thus, with his wisdom, Saranga became the minister of Vijayanagar and worked for years for the welfare of his kingdom and people. If 
इफ यू लाइक दिस वीडियो सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल मोर्ती मीडिया